Hi. Um, well, let's do a little bit of a kind of historical introduction to the material that we'll be going over on Thursday. So we're looking at an introduction to Islamic arithmetic. Um, so really, a really important major contribution that we kind of overlook because it's just so good and we use it without really thinking about it is the Hindu Arabic numbers. Um, these were first developed in India uh, around 500. Um, so there's a <clears throat> famous Indian mathematician around 475 and he wasn't using them, but his uh, student Bhaskara the first was using them uh, at the beginning of the um, sixth century. So that's what we think we think um, was kind of developed around there. Now, the key way to describe these numbers is that they, they are decimal, cipherized and positional. Uh, decimal uh, just means it's base 10. Um, so for example, the number <clears throat> 123 uh, is 3 plus 2 times 10 plus 1 times 10 squared or 100. Okay, so it's in, in base 10. Um, there's actually uh, other bases that can be used quite successfully for numbers. One that we'll look at a lot is the sexagesimal system, which is base 60. Uh, that comes from Mesopotamia. Um, it's why we have 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a minute, it comes comes from there. And it's very much, you know, to do with degrees, minutes and seconds. Um, the Mesopotamians, like the Babylonians and so forth, were very strong at computation. Uh, so that's why the base 60 system uh, persists uh, because other systems, i.e. like the Greeks and them, use the Babylonian system because their computational methods weren't so strong, so they just copied the, the Mesopotamians. Okay, uh, cipherized means uh, that there are, oh, other bases. Okay, uh, there's lots of hints that there are other bases uh, that have come down to us. Uh, so for example, that the fact that there's six feet in a fathom, 12 inches in a foot, three feet to a yard, um, that there's, uh, what is it, four bushels to a peck, uh, eight pints to a gallon, uh, three teaspoons to a tablespoon. These are all signs that there are uh, other um, bases that have been used in the past. Um, in other cultures, we know uh, use base five. Uh, base 20 is another sort of popular uh, system. Um, the Mayans uh, used a base 20. Um, the Gauls in France used to use a base 20 system. Uh, and there's a remnant of that in, um, in French, if you know how French do numbers, um, like, uh, you know, Catravant is for 80 in French, which is four times 20. Um, anyway, it, it's cipherized, which means that they have a symbol or a cipher for the digits one through nine to represent the numbers one through nine. Uh, and here you see them there. Uh, uh, so eventually they, when they reach the West after hundreds of years and lots of variation, they turned into the, the numbers that we uh, know and use. Um, there are other, other way, ways of doing things. There are uh, under cipherized systems. So for example, um, the Egyptians and the Mesopotamians, the Babylonians, um, they only had two ciphers, like they had a mark for one and a mark for 10, and they would do like a tally thing. So four was just written as four strokes, 20, it was tw uh, two of the, the 10 strokes, so 23. And, yeah, etc. 
Uh, there are over cipherized systems, like for example, the Greeks, um, they had symbols for one through nine, and then they had different symbols for 10 through 90, and then they had other symbols for 100 th through 900. Uh, they used letters of the alphabet, and since there were only 24 Greek letters, uh, they had to borrow three uh, letters from the Phoenician alphabet to make up um, their, the, the 27 symbols they used for their numbers. Um, and the, the neat, really kind of powerful thing that goes forward is, is a positional system. So I mentioned 123, so if you have like 123.4, so their position tells you what number it is. So three in one, two, in 123, the three represents three units, the two represent two tens, etc. And uh, the 0.4 that uh, denotes four tenths. And because of this, they had have a special mark, uh, uh, which uh, was like a little dot that they put in the middle and that sometimes got expanded to a little circle. Uh, it was called Sif, Sif. I can't, my Arabic is not very good. Uh, it comes from the Arabic word Sifira, means to be empty, uh, to be void. Um, and this, when it got translated, when that got translated to French, uh, we come up with cipher. And when it got translated into Italian, uh, we got the word zero. So it's important to note that they really did not think of zero as a number. It was just like a, a, a positional convenience. Uh, the, the idea that zero is a number is a very modern uh, invention. Uh, and so you might think, well, why do we call it Hindu Arabic numbers? Because it looked like the Indians did all the work. Um, the Arabic invention, which kind of topped it off and made it the super useful thing is they extended it to decimal fractions. So when I said 123.4, that wouldn't have been, Indians wouldn't know what to do with that, but that was kind of like an Arabic invention. And that was around 950 uh, that it first got invented, and then they lost it, and they invented it again, and, um, uh, and eventually got to the West, and it got invented again, uh, and it really was until around 1600 uh, that the modern uh, way that we write numbers uh, sort of came about. There were other sort of conventions about how you denote decimal fractions. So by a decimal fraction, I'm talking about like the 0.12, Point 0.12 means one tenth plus two one hundredths. And, and this is, uh, makes the cool system that we have, our number system today. Um, so here is a quote, uh, Severus Sebokt, who was a Nestorian bishop uh, somewhere up in uh, the upper Euphrates uh, valley, so somewhere between modern day Iraq and Syria. Uh, he was a, a bishop, a Nestorian bishop. N Nestorian Christians is, is like one of them, is a major Eastern Christian sect. Uh, it kind of broke off from Western Christianity around 400. It's very old. At, at one point, you know, it was like the biggest Christian religion in the world in, in terms of area, like it went from the Mediterranean to India. So for example, because uh, it was supposedly founded by St. Thomas. So it was in India and China. It was very big with the Mongols uh, until eventually things went against them. There was a big split. Uh, and nowadays there's maybe a million Nestorians in the, in the world and they were very uh, heavily tyrannized by ISIS, for example. So anyway, Severus says, I will not say anything now of the science of the Hindus, who are not even Syrians, of their subtle discoveries in this science of astronomy, which are even more ingenious than those of the Greeks and Babylonians, and of their fluent method of their calculation, which surpasses words. I want to say only that it is done with nine signs. If those who believe that they have arrived at the limit of science because they speak Greek have known these things, they would perhaps be convinced even a bit late that there are others who know something, not only Greeks, but also men of a different language. So that quote is just saying, Indian, Indian numbers rule, they're, they're great. They're really good for calculation. 
course, being a Christian bishop, he's super interested in astronomy and calculation because he wants to figure out when Easter is. That was actually one of the main scientific problems um, of the ancient and medieval Christians, like figuring out when is Easter. Uh, so, um, so he liked that. And he noticed that it talks about nine signs. That's the digits one through nine. So he's not Again, he's not thinking of zero as a number. And he's just saying, and he's talking about the Greeks, of course, is because you know everyone goes on about Plato and Aristotle and how cool they were and how they knew everything and how classical Greece was the best. And he's saying, well, there are other, other things in heaven and earth than you dreamed of, Horatio. Okay, so let's get uh, medieval Islam into the business. So let's talk about the Abbasid Caliphs. Um, they took over the Islamic world in around 750. They overthrew the previous dynasty and uh, they moved. Uh, so Islamic world, remember, starts in Saudi Arabia. The Umayyads moved the capital to Damascus. Uh, the Abbasids, uh, I think they called that because they're related to Abbas, who was an uncle of Muhammad. So they're trying to emphasize that that connection to Muhammad. Uh, they rule originally from Kufa, which is a town in uh, Iraq, and they're there until they uh, kind of be, build Baghdad in 762. So the caliph then is Al-Mansur, and he receives Hindu scholars in 780, so uh, who came to help figure out problems of astronomy, and they brought with them uh, Hindu uh, numerals. And so that's how it uh, that's believed how it first came to the Islamic world. Uh, his son is Harun al-Rashid. He's famous because he's the guy in um, one thousand one Arabian Nights. Um, he builds this famous library. It's known as the House of Wisdom, um, and in it he does um, various translations and they do commentaries. So, for example, here you see that. Um, like all the big names, you know, Euclid, Archimedes, Apollonius, Diophantus, Menelaus, all got translated from Greek into Arabic. And as well, they did translations for medicine, philosophy, so, you know, Aristotle, Plato, all these, uh, a lot of Greek works survives because uh, they were translated into Arabic. And his son is Al-Mamun, uh, he expands the library and he is a patron to various scientists. Uh, and the important guy for us is Al Khorizmi, who we'll talk about next. Um, so he wrote this book, uh, The Book of Addition and Subtraction According to the Hindu Calculation by Muhammad ibn Musa Al Khorizmi. Right, so if we look at his name a little bit. Ibn Musa means that he's the son of Musa, and al Khurizmi means that he comes from Khurizm, Khurizm, which is somewhere in Central Asia, uh, which is kind of interesting, because it means that here we have someone from Central Asia, someone who's not an Arab, uh, achieving quite high, high position. So um, this, this is kind of signs that maybe there's some kind of meritocracy going on back then. Unfortunately, uh, this work doesn't survive, but there is a 12th century Latin translation. Um, now, this is a problem, right? Someone writes a textbook, and then later on, someone writes another textbook where they take the earlier textbook and they make improvements to it. So, of course, the earlier textbook gets lost. And so it's hard to, to find the the stream of texts where ideas continue. And uh, so the book that we'll be looking at um, comes from 150 years later in 950, and that's The Principles of Hindu Reckoning um, by Kushya bin Laban. So he's the son of Laban. It's, that's the earliest surviving text in Arabic. Uh, it has nine Part one has nine chapters on decimal arithmetic, and part two has 16 chapters on sexagesimal arithmetic. 
Now you might be wondering why, why are they doing base 10 arithmetic and base 60 arithmetic? So remember decimal fractions kind of weren't well known at this time. And so the way they did fractions is they did it in, they did their fractions in base 60. Again, this sort of tests to how good the, the, the Mesopotamian and the Babylonian mathematicians were at doing computations. There's, you know, people would suddenly go off to base 60 to do things because the techniques are sort of so good. Okay, uh, so there's things to note about this. Uh, the, all these texts are completely rhetorical, it's like everything is written out in words, even numbers. The only time they use numbers, those Hindu Arabic numerals, is when they actually write down what you write on your dust board. So your dust board is how you do your computations. There's no paper around at this time. So you have like, um, like this kind of rectangular array. It's filled with sand and you write on it with your finger and you do your math in it. Okay, so there's no paper. So you're limited in memory. It's, you know, limited with your space you've got to do. So all your algorithms have got to be able to do your computation in a limited space. Okay, and that's what we'll talk about on Thursday's class. Okay.